Welcome to God's Word Fellowship. I am Gerald Santiago. The title of our series is Jesus the Only Way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Uh, let me encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, follow us on our Facebook page. Like and follow our Facebook page and also um, check out our community section. We keep publishing uplifting, edifying messages and um, um, you know, you will be encouraged, you will be strengthened. It will help you keep moving forward, you will get a boost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And um, we are also publishing shots. Check them out. It will be a blessing to you. Hallelujah to Jesus. Do share our um, uh, videos and uh, messages with your friends, family, relatives, co-workers, you know, fellow believers, servants of God. God will honor you. Thank you so much for that. And uh, let's pray. Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much for your glorious, glorious love. Father, we thank you for your great love. Father, you are our strength. Father, you are the strength of our life. Father, you are our shield and our exceedingly great reward. Father, you are our deliverer, our savior, the most high, the king of kings, the God of gods, the Lord of all kings, the great king over all the earth. Father, we set our eyes upon you. We look to you. May the maker of heaven and earth be involved in every aspect of our life, in every aspect of our family, every aspect of the call and the assignment that you have given us, in every aspect of our business, and in our jobs. Father, we thank you are with us as you were with Joseph. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon the work of our hands. Father, we thank you that we will eat the fruit of our labor. Father, we thank you so much that we are moving forward. Declare this with me. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we are moving forward. In the name of our Lord Jesus, we are increasing, we are growing, we are multiplying. In the name of our Lord Jesus, no weapon formed against us will prosper. No man will be able to stand before us all the days of our life. God will cause us to inherit the blessings that He has given us through our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for it. We praise you for it. We worship you for it. Hallelujah to Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. Blessed be your holy name. Father, you are good and your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah to Jesus. Go with me to, we are still praying. Hallelujah. Go with me to Psalm, Psalm 136. Hallelujah to Jesus. Let's begin from verse 1. We are going to just read it to God. Right? We are going to pray. We are just going to read it before God. We are going to read it to Him actually. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for He is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, You are good and Your mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks unto the God of gods for Your mercy endures forever. O oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for your mercy endures for ever. To you who alone doeth great wonders, your mercy endures forever. To you that by wisdom made the heavens, for your mercy endures forever. Father, you stretched out the earth above the waters, for your mercy endures forever. Father, you made the great lights, for your mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by the day, because your mercy endures forever. The moons and the stars to rule by night, for your mercy endures forever. To him that smote Egypt in their firstborn, for your mercy endures forever. 
and brought out Israel from among them. For your mercy endures forever. With a strong hand and with a stretched out arm, for your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Father, not only are you the God of gods and the Lord of lords and the maker of heaven and earth, Father, you do wonders for us. You do wonders in our life. You would move heaven and earth to help us like you did for Israel. Father, you do great things, mighty things, wonderful things for your people. And you are not changed and you will never change. Father, because you do not change, we are not consumed. And because you are faithful, our enemies haven't overcome us. Circumstances have not defeated us. People have not defeated us. Because you are on our side and because of your favor and your goodness and your kindness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. And Father, we thank you for the glorious, glorious future you have for us. We appreciate it, Father. We thank you for it. We praise you for it. Father, we love you with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and with all our strength. Father, we thank you so much for your great love for us. And Father, help us to walk with you. Help us to live for you. For our Lord Jesus who died and was raised up again. Father, even now we pray that you stretch out your hand to heal. Heal people, Father, and signs and wonders be done. Father, we ask in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we pray your healing anointing drive out every form of sickness, every form of disease. Father, your anointing break every yoke and remove every burden, break every chain. Father, let there be peace, comfort and strength in their life. Father, we pray for your goodness. And Father, we pray that you meet their needs and whatever it is they are dealing with, whatever problems they are facing. Father, we pray that you solve it. You are well able. We Father, you are the God of miracles, the God of wonders. Father, whatever it is that they need, Father, we pray that you do wonders for them, miracles for them. And Father, we thank you for it. Father, we appreciate it. Father, we praise you for it. Father, we thank you so much you heard and answered our prayers. Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Glory be to God. You know our God is good. Hallelujah. Our God is a good God. And we serve a great God who loved us. He loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us on the cross. Imagine that. Go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Say constraineth us. The love of Christ. Christ constrains us to do something, right? Because we thus judge that if one, that is Jesus, died for all, then we're all dead. And Jesus died for all. Why did he die for all? That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him, unto Jesus, who died for them and rose again. Hallelujah. See, we live for Jesus. Not for ourselves anymore. If you would live for Jesus, he, he will bless you beyond measure. Right? Whatever plan that you have come up with, whatever uh, plans for your future life, uh, the path that you have chosen, whatever plans that you have in terms of your prosperity and welfare, right? whatever it is that you have planned, God will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. If you would... Uh, live for him if you would serve him you will spend your days in prosperity your years in pleasure if you are willing and obedient you will eat the good of the land it is for you the best of the land is for you you understand this God has already ordained these things for you how do you access it you live for him you seek him Hallelujah, that's how you access these great blessings. 
eh, serving our Lord Jesus, it's profitable. <laughs> and our Lord Jesus blesses his people. That's the way of God study the Bible. God is a God who blesses his people. Eh, hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. All right then. Go with me to the book of Jeremiah. We will read our text and we will uh, uh, move to the defense that um, Stephen made. Go with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 6 and let's read from verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way? And walk therein and you shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. <laughs> Hallelujah. Also, I said, watchmen over you, hearken to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not hearken. <laughs> Hallelujah to Jesus. So you see, there is a good path. There is a path that will lead you to blessing. It will lead you to a good life. That will lead you to a prosperous life. There is a path which when uh, taken and when you walk in it, it will produce a great life. God has set those paths. And when you start traveling in that path, right, in the end is peace. I like this verse. You know, my wife kept you know, repeating this verse to me in the last few days. Right? And we were... Uh, yeah, go with me to Psalm 37. Hallelujah to Jesus. Verse 37. Mark the perfect man. Behold the upright. For the end of that man is peace. Hallelujah. The end is what? Peace. Peace is shalom. Shalom is blessing in every area. Total, complete blessing. Right? Nothing missing. Nothing broken. You are blessed in all things like Abraham. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. So, when you start following God, the end is peace. The end is blessed in all areas. That's the end. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, in the book of James, in the epistle of James, it says this. Go with me to the epistle of James. James chapter 5. Now, people want to look at um, the book of Job. You know, there are, there are people who have a lot of things to say about the book of Job. But let me show you something. Verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You know, during the times of difficulties, Job endured. Right? You heard of the patience of Job. He was patient. He, he, he stuck it out. Now, he did, his knowledge was not perfect. He said things he should not say. At all. But one thing about Job, he endured the difficulties. He did not leave God because he faced difficulties. And the kind of stuff that he faced, I mean, come on, man. Right? <laughs> you don't even want to wish it upon your enemies. You know, it was that bad. But even though he faced such trouble, he endured. He was patient. And notice what was the result. And you have to learn to focus on the end. Because notice, what does the Bible say? This is the Holy Spirit talking. You understand that, right? And have seen the end of the Lord. What was the end? Right? The end was double blessing. Job served God. God himself testified about him. Right? So, the end of Job was double blessing. Have seen the end of the Lord. And why was the double blessing given? Because the Lord is very petty pitiful and of tender mercy that's what we read in psalms you know his mercy endures forever why does god do good things for you why does he bless you because he is good he is merciful he is kind and the end of a man who serves god is blessing is blessing that's why you should learn to judge you. Is the, what, what path is this? Is this the path of blessing? And if you take the path of the blessing and you hold fast to it and you walk along with God, God will establish you. God will strengthen you. God will bless you. God will increase you. You will have enduring blessing, enduring riches, enduring goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. We are focusing on one particular way we studied different ways that God has established 
we are talking about the way for salvation in this particular series in the previous series we started to focus on that uh, verse in jeremiah and uh, we looked at various ways of uh, the men and women and the women of god and um uh in between the holy ghost quickened me to focus on jesus so we started looking at jesus and the holy ghost developed it into a separate series so and that's what we are doing right now right we are still talking about the same subject we just focusing on jesus being the way and uh, we are particularly focusing on how to defend your faith because the faith faith in jesus is being attacked right faith in jesus is being attacked and as christians we should be well versed in the scriptures we should take the time to study the scriptures read the scriptures listen to messages like this equip yourself to answer you understand that right first we should live it right and we should defend it and we should preach jesus this is the time of our active faith say active faith right we hear the word of god we live the word of god we defend our faith and we preach jesus right you should be like nehemiah you know what nehemiah did when he was building the temple his adversaries were threatening him to stop it so on one hand he will have instruments of war so that he can defend himself and uh, the people who are building the wall right and on the other hand they will do the work of building both happened simultaneously so on one hand you have to defend your faith on the other hand you have to preach jesus hallelujah hallelujah to jesus glory be to god all right so keep those thoughts in mind and um, let's go to acts chapter 7 acts chapter 6 let's begin in acts chapter 6 so the bible talks about let's read verses 8 to 10 first and then we will pick it up from chapter 7 and the stephen full of faith and power did great wonders and miracles among the people then there are also certain of the synagogue which is called the synagogue of the libertines and cyrenians and alexandrians and uh, of them of cilicia and of asia disputing with stephen and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake see this is how you have to deal with people who oppose your faith who question your faith who who are coming against your faith in jesus who are coming against the ways of god that you practice in your life you need to learn how to speak right with wisdom and by the holy spirit paul said this you know this is this is a beautiful passage you know this is something that i pray for myself and you should pray whether you are a believer or whether you are a servant of god you should pray this for yourself see he is saying this hallelujah to jesus hallelujah to jesus i think it is in first thessalonians let's see hallelujah to yeah first thessalonians chapter 1 verse 5 for our gospel came not unto you in word only but also in the power and in the holy ghost and in much assurance notice paul is preaching the word but how is he preaching the word he is preaching it with in power in the power of the holy spirit and in the holy ghost right under the direction of the holy ghost in the, with the wisdom of the holy ghost and in much assurance he is fully persuaded see that's why it works see that's why it's so important that you you soak yourself in the word right and you live for jesus because that's what produces that assurance that conviction that single minded life you understand this right you want to speak jesus you want to preach jesus you want to preach the ways of god you want to practice it and you want to speak it and and when you speak it you have to speak it in the power in the holy ghost and with much assurance whether you are a believer or whether you are a servant of god preaching the word this is the method with wisdom in the holy ghost in the power of the holy ghost hmm? you know this is something you should pray right you should pray about these things you should ask god god help me I, I, I want to preach Jesus. I want to talk about Jesus. I, I want to testify about Jesus. I want to witness Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. How do you do it? With wisdom. Say wisdom. And under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. And in the power of the Holy Spirit. 
that's how you do it that's the formula that's the method so you should ask god eh? make this a part of your prayer part of your prayer life god i want to speak like this i want to speak with wisdom i want to speak in the holy ghost i want to speak with the power of the holy spirit see because situations differ how you talk about jesus will differ according to each individual each situation you can see jesus you know in his ministry he met the samaritan woman and he started talking about water of all things she she, she was interested in water and jesus picked up from that water <laughs> and and started speaking about the living water and who will give the living water and and then he ended up talking about him being the messiah and she got saved and the entire city got saved hallelujah see that there are ways the holy ghost has ways that there, there is wisdom that that we need to tap into that is the, the leadership of the holy spirit that we need to access it is available for all of us it's available for everyone you know stephen was not an apostle he was a deacon yeah you understand this hallelujah hallelujah to jesus all right then now let's go to acts chapter 7 so stephen uh, there were four primary accusations made against uh, stephen what was it they set up false witnesses they couldn't uh, talk to him because uh, stephen was you know knew the word of god he was speaking under the anointing unction of the holy spirit with wisdom they couldn't handle the man so they suborned men right um, um, yeah and uh, they falsely accused him of blaspheming against first of all moses and against god that's those are the first two accusations and then they also said that he spoke verse 13 verse 11 talks about uh, how they falsely testified that he spoke against moses and against god and then verse 13 talks about how they again set up false witnesses who lied who accused him of speaking blasphemous words against this holy place meaning the temple and the law right the first five books of the bible so these were the accusations made against stephen and stephen begins to talk about he he begins to defend himself he gives a response and the response is beautiful you know it, it's not a one line word right you see you have to understand that this response was inspired by the holy spirit and it was given with great wisdom you you can see this kind of pattern when peter defended himself you know in acts chapter 4 again you will see wisdom and the leading leadership of the holy spirit the power of the holy spirit you can see in acts chapter 10 when uh, peter was being questioned by religious people you know pharisees you know believers but they were pharisees they have become believers and uh, they 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 took issue uh, because um, peter went to the house of cornelius to get them saved <laughs> he said you went into a house of a gentile and uh, so it's interesting peter didn't say i am an apostle i am the number one apostle the the gospel to the circumcision is commit, committed into my hands i'll do what i want <laughs> that's not how he defended how did he defend himself now he began at the very beginning he gave a proper account of events and he he structured it in such a way by the time he finished everybody was okay this is god uh, we will be a, we will not make a fuss about it <laughs> hallelujah so that there is a way to do it and you will see it in acts repeatedly taught to us repeatedly over and over again there is a way to defend there is a way to answer hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so look at verse 2 and he said men brethren and fathers hearken <laughs> hallelujah men brethren and fathers hearken reminds me of uh, Anthony's response is <laughs> right you remember in Julius Caesar right Anthony speaks like this hallelujah men brethren and fathers hallelujah anyway hearken the god of glory appeared unto our father abraham the god of glory appeared unto our father abraham hallelujah notice he is he is beginning right with abraham because abraham is the starting for, point for the jewish nation israel 
right so he he is starting right from there he didn't begin somewhere in the in between because what was the accusation that he spoke blasphemous words against moses and the law so he is showing them that he knows the law and he has utmost respect for the words of moses right he he is he is expressing his faith his convictions his belief in what the word of god says in the law in what uh, you know he is expressing his uh, faith and uh, understanding of the words of moses in genesis was written by moses right the god of glory appeared unto our father abraham when he was in mesopotamia before he dwelt in haran right you know how um, abraham left mesopotamia but he went and camped in haran along with his father he stayed there until his father died and um, god had actually spoke to him when he was in uh, mesopotamia itself you now sometimes when you read uh, genesis 12 uh, if, especially if you begin from there you know it sounds like he spoke to him when he was in haran right but actually he spoke to him when he was in mesopotamia itself because even in genesis chapter 15 when god is speaking to um abraham he says i'm the lord who called you out of ur which was in mesopotamia hallelujah so and verse 3 it says and said unto him get thee out of your country and from your kindred and come into the land which i will show thee then came he out of the land of the chaldeans and dwelt in haran and from thence when his father was dead he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell hallelujah so he begins so he he is saying i believe in the god of glory who appeared unto abraham i believe that god called him out of the world the babylon system the babylon and separated him and caused him to come to this land where you are now dwelling i believe that hallelujah that's what he is saying and he gave him none inheritance in it no not so much as to set his foot on yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him when he as yet he had no child he is expressing his total conviction that this land the land of israel was given to the people of israel by god almighty himself according to moses right and god spake on this wise that his seed should sojourn in a strange land that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil for 400 400 years and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will i judge said god and after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place and he gave him the covenant of circumcision circumcision is a big thing in the, in the teaching of moses hallelujah right and it's a big thing with these people pharisees and all the uh, elders of israel so he is bringing that in i believe in this too i believe circumcision was given by god i believe this nation was given to us by god i believe abraham was chosen by the god of glory hallelujah and he gave him the covenant of circumcision and so abraham begot isaac and circumcised him the eighth day isaac begot jacob and jacob begot the 12 patriarchs the patriarchs moved with envy sold joseph into egypt but god was with them he he in this particular defense he he highlights three people right he highlights three different people joseph moses and then our lord jesus all three of them have something in common hallelujah hallelujah to jesus and these people thought they know the law and stephen is telling <laughs> he is showing them something they are acting as if they were the guardians of the law but they were not they they, they these guys were you know they had zeal but not knowledge and many of them these are the very people who crucified the lord jesus because of envy and these are the people who questioned peter in chapter 4 for for doing a good work right so these are not exactly you know uh, great and noble and uh, honest people the people sitting them are uh, sitting there are hard hearted hypocrites 
they 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 you know they conspired and captured jesus because he allowed himself to be captured right and they set up false witnesses to crucify jesus so the, these guys are crooks they are just pretending to be these 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 great noble you know guardians of the faith hallelujah and look at verse 9 and the patriarchs moved with envy sold joseph into egypt but god was with him underline these two things sold joseph moved with envy underline that sold joseph into egypt but god was with him hallelujah and delivered him out of all his afflictions and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of pharaoh king of egypt and he made him governor over egypt and all his house so even though people are moved with envy you don't have to fear god is with you say god is with me and god will give you favor god will give you wisdom god will deliver you out of all afflictions whatever affliction you are facing god is well able to deliver you he will hallelujah say god is with me god will deliver me god will give me favor god will give me wisdom i refuse to worry i refuse to fear hallelujah 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 to jesus now you should learn to speak like this because that's what the bible teaches you hallelujah hallelujah to jesus so this is, he is presenting joseph right hallelujah and you will see why he uh, particularly spoke about joseph here as we as we move in our study now there came a dearth over all the land of egypt and canaan and great affliction and our fathers found no sustenance but when jacob heard that there was corn in egypt he sent out our fathers first and at the second time joseph was made known to his brethren and joseph's kindred was made known unto pharaoh notice he is taking the time to talk about how the nation of israel came into being he is taking the time to talk about his faith in what moses taught in the law he is answering his accusers these these are not some random speech no this is being constructed by the holy spirit the holy ghost is giving him utterance he is giving him the wisdom to construct his defense hallelujah so by saying all this he is just nullifying the words that the false accusers accusers said against him hallelujah notice verse 14 then sent joseph and called his father jacob to him and all his kindred three score and 15 souls so jacob went down into egypt and died he and our fathers and were carried down to sikkim and laid in the sepulcher that abram bought for a sum of money of the sons of emor the father of sikkim the graves were in in the land of canaan the land of promise they were all buried there the patriarchs hallelujah but when the time of the promise drew nigh now notice he, he, he is expressing his utter conviction he didn't say moses said notice in not one place did he say moses said why is he not saying moses said see because he has made the teaching of moses his belief this is his conviction this is his thought this is what he thinks about those matters which moses spoke about in other words he is saying i believe the words of moses so much so that i made it my thought this is what i think this is how i think about the matter right i am in agreement with moses you know this is how you should think when the bible says something about a subject it should become your thought it should become your belief it should become your conviction hallelujah hallelujah to jesus right the word of god should become your conviction the word of god should become your thought process your thought your expectation your belief it should also become your words hallelujah 
See, notice not one time he said, um, okay, this is what Moses said, but this rabbi said something. My That, that rabbi said something. Okay, no, no, somebody else said something. And uh, uh, all this school of thought, the Gamaliel school of thought said, said this. There's another guy, I, I, I think it's a contemporary Shammai or something like that. Right? I forgot his name. Right? There is another school of thought, which was, um, one was the Hillel school of thought and the another, there was another guy. Something with Shamma or something like that, right? Anyway, right? Uh, that school of thought says this, but I believe this. I, I believe this. That's not what he said. Notice he is talking about what he is believing, right? This is this is coming out of his heart because he has internalized the words of Moses. It's no more just the word of Moses. It is his belief, it is his conviction, it is his thought. That's what he is expressing in this defense. And when we come to this place, when we make the word of God our faith, our belief, our conviction, you know, our witness would be great. Our testimonies would be marvelous. It would inspire people. It would touch the hearts of people. It, it will break hardened hearts. Right? God can use you to speak Rama words and the Holy Ghost can move upon you to touch people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Take time to study this. Think about how he is saying it. Why he is saying it. What he is saying it. Meditate on this prayerfully. It will be a great blessing to you. Hallelujah. We will continue our study in the next message. Thank you so much for listening. God bless you. Jesus is coming soon.